Hi everybody, Richard from Electric Classic Cars here and it's time for an update on the race car. So first of all, we need to name this and somebody in the comments, genius, thought of calling it Buffy the Plaid Slayer. So we're going to call this project from now on Buffy. So update time on Buffy, where are we? Well, as you can see, it's a little bit um, uh, further on than it was last time you saw it. What we've done is, um, the, the, obviously the first thing we've got to do is get the immovable objects in, which are the motors, because the motors have to sit where the motors have to sit. You can't get away from that. You can't put the motor over there, etc. But to do that, we've got to know where the suspension is sitting. So now we've got some suspension or some of the suspension on here. So we've got the, um, the hub carriers, the hubs, everything on uh, there. Obviously, you know, we've mocked up a shock absorber, if you like, and we've also mocked up where we reckon height-wise it's going to be to be able to see where the actual drive shaft is going to be. So essentially, there's your front um, hub here, and we've got a fairly straight shot into the actual motor there. So that's why we've got all this stuff on, is to figure out where the drive shafts are going to sit to be able to then figure out where does the motor need to sit. So it's all mock-up at the moment, obviously, it's uh, gaffer tape just holding this uh, strut on here. But the other thing is steering. We've put the steering on to be able to figure out is it going to interfere with having a motor here? Because obviously this car never was designed to have a motor in, in there. So as you might expect, the motor is sitting where the, uh, the steering column would normally go. So we've got to think of a solution to that. So one thing at a time, let's, let's um, just talk about the motors first. So we've got a Model 3 motor in here at the moment. Um, obviously the um, end uh, drive solution we're going to put in here is the Tesla Plaid system. But just to get us up off the ground at the moment with a 400 volt system, I was going to put in something quick that we can just get the car going. Um, and I was thinking Model 3, um, but I've changed my mind. And that's what happens on projects. Um, I'm now going to go with a Tesla Model S performance setup because power, quite frankly. In short, um, the Tesla Model 3 performance is around about 440, 450 horsepower. And the Tesla Model S performance is around about 780 horsepower. So I thought, well, if we're going to have an initial setup just to test everything and just dial everything in, it's probably better off we have... Uh, something closer to the ultimate, which is the Tesla Plaid, which we're going to end up with um, at the end anyway. So that's going to come back out. But at least we've figured out now that a motor of that size can actually fit in there. Um, but one thing we definitely have noticed is if you come in closer, you'll see the steering is obviously not going to have a straight shot to here. So we're going to need to find a solution to join that up to there. And a number of uh, joints going down to there, I don't think it's going to cut it. It might do, but what I'm thinking of at the moment is uh, what you get on some builds that we've done in the past, which is kind of a, a 90 degree sort of like um, worm gear type system. So essentially it comes up here and then turns to complete 90 degrees and goes back to there. So that might be one of the solutions. Again, it's, um, it's all a little bit fluid at the moment. So that's one thing we've got to overcome now is how to get steering there. I've also considered, and I've got another meeting uh, next week, on fly-by-wire. So that might be another solution, is maybe uh, going with some kind of clever fly-by-wire system. But um, yeah, that's my backup anyway. So there we go. We've got the um, suspension sort of mocked up. Um, we've definitely got the problem with the steering. That motor is not the right motor. The right motor to go in there now is actually on the pallet over there, I just haven't put it in. But on the rear, if you come around to the rear, <coughs> and uh, one thing interesting thing I found out is um, we didn't have some uh, uh, golf wheels, which is what the stud pattern is, but at BMW 2002 wheels we do have, and they just literally fit on there, which is perfect. So we were able to just get the ride height sort of like around about right with just grabbing some wheels off the shelf that we had lying around. Um, so the rear side of things, what we've got um, to go in here is a good old fashioned, not so old fashioned, but a, a, a good old Tesla large drive unit, which is essentially what I have in the back of my Beetle. Um, so this is a mock-up. It's something we can lift and move around. 
you wouldn't do that with the original uh, motor, that's for sure. So we've now got to get that in line with the drive shaft, and it's, it's set back too far. So this bar here is going to have to come out. We're also going to um, need to move this over to that side there. So we'll just swap these hub carriers around, which will mean this bit here will go there. And that means that this then can move to where it needs to be. So this needs to be around about that position there. So the main bit of change we're going to do here is this bar is going to get cut out and then we're going to weld it on slightly further back or maybe just arc it back a little bit to be able to go back around this. So fairly minor sort of like changes here to do, but it means that we're going to get a nice big amount of power in the back and the front, so about 780 horsepower total. The other thing which is uh, I, I like about doing it uh, like this is the, um, when we put the Tesla plaid system in, pretty much it's all going to be kind of the same mount. So I know the Tesla plaid uh, motor has a different mount system. It has two mounts on the side here and one at the front. And this has one there, one there, and a stabilizer on the other side over there. But it's going to be pretty much the same sort of shape because obviously it still goes underneath a Tesla Model S in the same footprint. Um, and the other thing is with this here, that ends around about there, which means we've got a nice space in there for batteries. Whereas with the po Tesla Model 3 setup that I was going to do, the motors actually sit in front of the gear set, which means that it would have come a little bit further forward. So I've changed my mind. We're going to go with the Tesla Model S performance as the initial um, like test system. Um, and then battery packs. So where are we with that? So again, everything's mock-up at the moment. Everything's kind of fluid. Um, I'm just trying to uh, figure out where we're going to be putting uh, batteries. Um, obviously, we definitely want them low down because weight distribution, etc. And uh, um, if I just sit in it, it'll probably be... Oh, oh, everything's loosely in place at the moment. So... Center of gravity and weight distribution is really important when we're considering where to put the batteries. So one thing I thought of doing is building two saddle uh, battery packs either side here and then some at the rear there. So that's one of the options. Uh, the other is to actually do what I've just been playing around with now, which is essentially having kind of a, a false floor like that. Um, and then the seat actually sinks into a hole, if you like, where the batteries aren't. So we're thinking a couple of batteries there, a couple of batteries here, nice and low, a couple around the back there as well, and the seat just kind of sits into a hole in the middle. Um, so I'm just playing around to figure out, is there enough space to the motor? Is it okay to have my feet slightly higher and the pedal set slightly higher? Uh, which is why I've tilted this further back with this bit of wood here, just to get some options to see, will that even work? And that's kind of like uh, what we do with uh, a project like this. It's kind of like uh, a, a lot of suck it and see type um, situations where you offer something up, figure out if that's going to work and uh, go from there, really. So that's it so far. That's uh, pretty much brought you up to date with the, uh, with the race car project. Um, I think the next step is now we're going to be fabricating in the motor mounts front and rear so we'll get them all welded in proper that'll give us um, a hard stop as to where everything's got to go and then we'll probably start thinking about battery configuration where we're going to go I'm pretty much decided that we're going to go with LG Chem because uh, the C rating is quite high so that's the amount of amps that um, uh, can be provided to the motors because obviously with two motors uh, they're going to be pulling a lot of amps. So you need a battery that's got a high C rating to be able to deliver those amps when my right foot desires it. Um, so I'm going to go with LT Chem. Probably going to go with 18. So it's going to be a 6S three-piece system. So essentially that means uh, three um, packs of six in series. And those uh, three packs then are all paralleled up. That means they're going to be sharing those amps over three groups of batteries, if you like. So um, that should also, you know, 
allow us um, to have a minimal voltage drop. And what I mean by that is whenever you put your foot down and loads of amps are desired for, uh, uh, requested from the battery pack, the volts can sometimes sag because you're pulling so many amps out. And what amps times volts is power, kilowatts. And if the volts are getting sagged and pulled down, that's not a good thing. So to have a maximum amount of power all the time, you kind of want a very hard, um, battery pack to be able to have minimal sag. So splitting the amp drawer over three parallel packs will help. Um, all great in theory, but in practice that means I've got to try and find a home for 18 batteries of this size. And these are the, that's the physical size and that's the mock-up, if you like. So I'll try and lift one up. I say they're mock-ups, they're still a little bit heavy. So that is the size of one of the LG cams, and we've got to fit 18 of them in. Not only that, but we've also got to have bus bars on the top, um, contactors and other bits and pieces inside these battery boxes, as well as cooling plates. Um, so they end up being a little bit more bulky than that, but uh, that's what we're working with at the moment, some, some mock-ups. And uh, as I say, we're probably gonna have some around down the side here, like this. If you can imagine that there, another one there, three at the front, going around the back there as well, and the seat will sit in the middle of it. And that's where we're at. So there you go. Um, next time you see this, we'll hopefully have the motors all um, uh, welded in, and we'll be a bit further on with an idea of definitely where we're going with the batteries. And don't be surprised if I change my mind again. <laughs> but there we go. Hope you enjoyed that update. and. Um, I'll uh, I'll see you on the next race car update. Uh.